Hey, Inspired Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers, it's John Nolan here. And today we welcome back a familiar face on the Inspired channel, a familiar face uh, to all of you, filmmaker, movie maker, researcher, and um, a, a very deep thinker, a soul brother. Frank Jacob, thank you so much for joining us again today. How are you doing, John? Great to be back. I'm doing great. Thank you. And Frank, I'm, I'm already in many ways, but in one particular way, I'm grateful for the guardians of the looking glass because they brought us together and they always trigger our conversations and our conversations kind of lead us into the new and the next level. So I'm really grateful. But the occasion that we use for today's conversation is the new video that came out by this mysterious group. And for those of you who are just getting started on this topic, uh, there'll be links in the video description. There'll be links up here where you can uh, watch our previous conversations uh, about this mysterious group that came out a few months ago. Frank broke the story um, on the internet, talked about what these guardians of the looking glass that were talking about this top secret technology um, that where you could see into the future and see possible future timelines. Um, now they've released uh, their current or their latest video after a lot of uh, turmoil and chaos, Frank. I mean, they've been taken down. They, they deleted their videos. The forum that semi-associated has gone. I mean, there's a lot that's been happening, but can you kind of give us an overview of what this latest message from the Guardians is about and, and what's the latest on the Guardians of the Looking Glass? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, as you know, it's, it's just been something that from the very start has been intense in all, in all levels. And, you know, intense from the messages in terms of what was seen in the timelines coming at us. And of course, that, you know, was controversial from the very start. And they've been controversial with every single one of their video releases. Um, and now a lot of people are, you know, at this point, it's, it's, um, it's like a long distance run, I feel. And a lot of people are getting to the point where they're getting um impatient they're and it's interesting to observe all this they're getting frustrated they're falling out they're getting aggressive um and they're, they're accusatory even toward me I and, mean, and towards even, us too yeah even people are blaming me for oh i'm the one that promoted them and all this and it's not true i just reported on this you know and it's and what happened is that because we talked about it on the level that we talked about it it triggered um a conversation a discussion about these timelines and so what happened is that they've just gone into um, a position of, I think, defensiveness, uh, you know, after we collectively focused on preventing this April 18th event, and then after that, the May 20th event came, and, and at first, I think the last time we talked, that May 20th had just passed, and it's, we'd gotten messages from Raindrop Dow, which was the other person, the other event that they had described that was going to happen, because this one person was pivotal as a kind of crypto scientist, quantum computer scientist, in um, trying to fight back for the people using the same tools that the dark side is using. And that, that I think inspired a lot of people. Of course, we don't know if the guy exists, he's in hiding somewhere, if he never existed or if he did exist. Um, and you know, th that's a big controversy, but in the end, it's interesting because there were so many cross references between people, events, um, past events, other events, other non-related events that it just seemed unusual, like it, for, for me personally to observe it, um, that I could just be written off as some kind of scam. It almost seems like, well, yeah, you could look at it that way, but in a lot of ways, it's not definitively proven either way. Just like if whistleblowers. I'm, if, if I may interject program. here, because there's, there's, there's at least one piece of information I can think of right now, April 18th. Um, the the uh, the the projection was that if it's not prevented, there's going to be a bombing in New York City Times Square, and so they described that. Now, a few days prior, there was a big event in New York City, a subway, whatever that was. We we're not sure because there's it's, the information that's coming out is controversial. But at least it was a major media event. A few days leading up to April 18th. And um, where, where there was a shooting in a subway and, and whatnot, it triggered a major media um, release, which maybe considering the scale of and, and how many shootings there are in big cities, you know, it's, it was quite odd how big the story was, actually. But another thing that happened on April 18th, which was very strange to me, is that um, Trump came out with a with a message um, and basically 
referenced the on 18th the crime he was talking about the the prosecutor in that uh in, in new york city and how they were doing or, or the attorney general and how they were doing a really bad job and actually referencing this incident in the subway to me this was um you know with everything that's going on in the world there were too many dots connected for it to not have significance at least that's what i wanted to throw in um that's something the whole world could observe and if you connect the dots well you know you 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 come to a con- certain conclusion i think well we had remote viewers in on it too on over here in, in europe and they were looking at it skeptical in the beginning and in the end they all had to say there's something to this so whatever it is, we don't know what it is yet. You know, I mean, we'd like to think there are the good guys coming out and giving us something to work with to go up against this and this coming chaos that's coming out there. And we we're all sensing it. So regardless of how you look at them, um, you know, they are they're releasing information, which is kind of causing us to it's kind of kind of kicking us in the butt saying, hey, sit up and, and take notice. There's something going on. Um, And so anyway, just to to continue on, they've gone through now a series of these videos and they've, um, the last one was this, this whole raindrop Dow thing and they um, were making appearances on the raindrop Dow forum. And at the very end, raindrop Dow was um, literally attacked. And, uh, you know, I could show you, you know, the last screenshot of the, of the last message that was put out which looks like that. And it, they basically said <clears throat> they were going to go try to see Dr. Wu to see his lab. And they noticed it was surrounded by the military. And then they um, they basically had to pass along all their information to, they say, the guardians because they were afraid of hackers. And then they said, uh, we have information that some of our beta testers were working for the WEF, which, you know, it's not surprising. Um, then they influenced other beta testers and created a group to destroy us. And I was watching some of this going down. I was paying attention to the forum because there were some very interesting conversations going on in there as well. And I have a few of those um, archived. And then they continue, we have been told Klaus Schwab personally oversaw the military operation in Laos to destroy Dr. Wu's lab and apprehend him. So they nabbed him. Um, you know, they basically apprehended him, they took him and then they say, we received anonymous tip in Singapore. Police are on their way to our location. We'll post updates. That was it. It's like um, it's like a thriller, literally. It reads like a thriller, right? And then uh, the next thing that happened is then, this is the, a screenshot. The top left, you see the Guardians of the Looking Glass YouTube page. Um, and suddenly there was only that one video. All other, the first three videos that they put out, the most, you know, like pregnant with information ones, they were gone. The fourth one, the, the one everyone thought was kind of the weird one is left, but, you know, but it talks about CERN. And then all of a sudden that was gone. I have a screenshot of that too, because all of a sudden one day I went to check the page and there was nothing there. On all, none of, they, have, they also have platforms on Rumble and Brighton and uh, pay, Patreon, I think. And so they were, they were all gone. If you look at Rumble and, and Brighton and they wouldn't have would they wouldn't have been censored there because there's no so that YouTube I get they might have been taken down but not on the other platforms. No, so it's like they were um, you know they were probably if they're like look if if they're real, they're, it's quite likely they were hacked. They were compromised and they were taken out. I mean, it's does it really surprise us if that's the case? I mean, come on, we have to realize that the other side is working with extremely sophisticated information and technology. And, and even if these, yeah, and even if these guardians were inside military insiders that were now on the outside, they're not working with the same level of tools as the other side is, you know? So it's very likely that, look, it's, it's not impossible that they were taken out you know and then they brought out their video the the final video which we can look at here and we can go through it because there's a lot of messages in here that are speaking on the one hand contradictory like i'll look at this there's here's what they said there's almost no time left the events we warned about that must be prevented were not prevented okay now they said the the events right well they they talked about 70 events so there were a lot more events to come. But that is contradictory because 18th, April 18th was, preve- prevent, was didn't prevented. Was prevented. And, 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 and the, 
Dr. Wu also didn't happen, at least not that, at the time they said it would. Exactly, exactly. And then, well, then they went on to say, you know, this doesn't mean there's no hope at all, but it is a great setback for the world and humanity. What we are seeing is that the looking glass data is being changed because of CERN. They are changing outcomes. They are making it more difficult for people to fight back. Now, I mean, I don't know if the people that uh, are tuning in now, I mean, not, not everybody watched some of our earlier videos, but on our second video, we talked about CERN and timelines. And I, I, I'll just put it up real quick. This slide was the one that we put up and it was talking about in 2010, 12 years ago, they were talking about how CERN is a time machine and how it works. This is a sort of a scientific paper that was released, an article that was written where they basically talked about how they created these wormholes in the laboratory. Um, and so they really are working on time travel and time manipulation technologies at CERN. And There's I, no I, doubt about that. I encourage everyone to go look at um, what is now known as the Mandela effect. And this conversation, of course, has been trivialized and popularized and all that. But look at the connection between what people perceive to be the Mandela effect and CERN and see how the timelines of that coincide, how people have collective false memory, but how that collective false memory only actually appeared after um, CERN got, you know, uh, so active. So there's a there's a at least a, a link there that I believe is very significant. Just go look at CERN and the Mandela effect. Yeah, well, and that's it. It gets it gets. Um, and what's interesting is that CERN was rebooted. It was re it was upgraded and they were working on with those tiny wormholes they were working in the area of around six tera electron volts which is six trillion electron volts which they were firing into magnetic you know fields to create these artificial wormholes and black holes to try and they say recreate the big bang um and now they've, since they've refurbished, they've upped it to more than double that capacity, 12, between 12 and 14 trillion electron volts, which they're working with. And that there's never been that much concentrated energy in one place on the planet ever, you know? So, and they're building newer ones too. Um, they're, they're building ones in China right now, incidentally, that are gonna be going up to 40 tera electron volts in the next couple of years. And if we look at, uh, and there's other technologies, like this is this is something which I just found out of coincidence the other day, but it was released on a channel called Unexplained Mysteries on June 19th, saying that scientists in Tennessee are working to basically announce they've been trying to figure out how, if there's parallel universes. And, you know, so there, you know, that's, a, that's some kind of a, a picture of what's happening in the atmosphere as a result. So, you know, in the comments are interesting. People are going, oh, that, that experiment doesn't look like it's going to go out very positive, you know. But the thing about CERN that's important, and here's a screenshot of actually CERN's activity, um, is that this, the, uh, the CERN frequencies um, that are being created are, are generating overloads in the Schumann resonances. And the Schumann resonances is what you see on this picture on the right-hand side. And the arrow is pointing toward a white area. And a lot of people are saying, oh, it's going up to frequencies of 40 hertz and whatnot. But it's, it's wrong. It's a wrong interpretation because many people don't understand how to un interpret the data. What the data is showing us, and here's another shot on the 14th of June, okay? You can see the white area. And you'll understand this, John, because you work in the recording studios and music. And you know if you've set a microphone level at a certain point, that's your measuring instrument of your voice in a certain way. Now, if you all of a sudden scream at the top of your lungs into the microphone, what happens? You overload the circuits, and especially in the digital age, it just goes, you know, it's totally, un you can't even read the data. And that what exactly, we're seeing yeah. in these white areas here, okay, here's another one on June 17. You know, we're seeing that um, these are overloads. The amplitude is so high that the measuring instruments and here's one on the 19th again. They're doing this almost every single day. And you can see in this one here, the red arrow here is showing us the exact correlation between when they fired up CERN and when the overload took place. So there's no doubt here at all that what's going on is, you know, that we are essentially being manipulated by the activities that are going on at CERN, whether it's 
inadvertent or not. You know, whether there are scientists that are working there on some projects that they're working on and not realizing that they might be party to other things, which is also possible that people that are working on projects don't know the full extent of what they're doing. They all, everything's compartmentalized. I mean, even in, in every, um, um, in every enterprise, you know, that is commercial, you compartmentalize certain things for the security of your company to not have a product exposed to patent exposed. This is a huge, huge project. So you would have to assume that there's only a handful, if at all, people that are actually privy to all information. And then there's also, which people don't know, but in those circles, it's not unusual to have memory wipes for people that walk on a work on high sensitive projects. Yes. So basically they'll work, they'll put their expertise into it. And when their project is over, their memory for that time span will be wiped. And they agree to that before that. This sounds science fiction, but this is totally possible. And it's being done consistently in military intelligence and, and uh, black, black ops and black projects. You're absolutely right. And this is the thing that we're talking about. We're talking about these are the kinds of operations that are taking place right out in the open. And we're not being told about them, but you know, people are feeling things. And with the Schumann frequencies, because of the overload of the Schumann frequencies, uh, the, the human brain is really like pre-wired to resonate at eight hertz, which is the primary frequency of the Schumann resonances. There's overtones like 12, 14, 20, and 40. They go up to different you know, frequency ranges, but eight is the primary one. And that's the frequency that our pineal gland locks into right at the very point of our, after 14 weeks, when we're still in embryo, our pituitary gland is the first, I mean, our, our um, yeah, our, our pituitary gland is the first thing that um, basically locks into that frequency and begins to pump out chemicals, which put us into an altered state of consciousness, which ties us into other dimensions. And eight hertz frequency is an under, another interesting thing about it is it's the, it's kind of a magical frequency uh, that this American scientist called Pahari figured out that it actually transcends dimensions. So it seems to actually penetrate into maybe the fifth dimension, you could say, which is where, you know, Burkhard Time talked about these reservoirs of data of our own programming code, which lie outside of physical dimensions, which is where we pull uh, information from to, you know, to create our lives. Because, you know, people have to remember we're not locked into the third dimension. We actually live outside of the three dimensions that we can touch and sense around us. And that we actually only interact in here, just like in the film, The Matrix. You know, we are, we've used the 3D space plus time, the fourth dimension, to gain experiences, but we actually pull it from other dimensions and we actually come from other dimensions, which is a lot different from artificial intelligence, for example, which we can get into in a bit. The, the truth, but the truth of the story here is that these nefarious groups, these dark groups that are um, they're pulling off all this stuff is they don't want us to access these uh, altered states or deeper states of consciousness to go into other dimensions, because that's how we, uh, you know, that's how we achieve self-actualization and self-actualized beings cannot be controlled or manipulated. So would you say that all the tech that's being introduced, all the electromagnetic uh, frequencies that are being um, introduced at such a fast pace that our our bodies can hardly uh, tolerate and manage it. Is it to keep us from accessing these uh, states of higher consciousness? I think it's always both, John. I think that on the one hand, yes, we do want technology. We want these extra conveniences. And the internet has brought a lot to us, even wireless, because it's almost like telepathic communication on a physical level. But at the same time, it's always just like at CERN, there's always other parties involved that are driving the technology and that know much more about the effects of the technology. And there's no doubt that the, particularly the next generation 5G is having a detrimental, a very detrimental effect. Um, you can go back to the early days of radar when radar phase first came out. You know, there was a wave of illnesses that hit mankind. They just don't, you know, they don't publish it or talk about it so much in the educational system. But you can find that data. It's all out there. There's every time there's been another level of this kind of wireless and radiation that we've created out there, it's created uh, more aberrations and more interference with our ability to lock into that other dimension, no doubt. So we're heading 
definitely into very dangerous territory right now with these radiations all around us. And we are, you could, you know, I always like to leave it open. You know, I mean, the effects of what's happening and on their own are already clearly blocking us, um, you know, from, from getting, you know, even if it's just having a headache or even if it's not being able to sleep. Uh, or being restless, or you know, having chronic fatigue, or all these things that are, that are surfacing in society all around us. They're 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 real. They are happening, and they're happening in tandem with the rise of unhealthy levels of technology. And there also have been scientists in the past, like Nikola Tesla, that have found ways to harmonize the technology with the magnetic sphere. So um, they're using wireless you know, electricity and wireless things that are in harmony and resonance with the natural fields in the ether. Whereas, you know, ether science is really not understood or really not pursued by a lot of this phys physics out there because they want to use the Einsteinian model, you know, which is an outdated, even plagiarized, old limited, you know, model, but it's based on that's what most of science is based on these days, you know, and, it's on the, the, there's no spirit. We need to understand also there's there's one group of people that always works with and towards harmony with everything they do it is it is there's always the bigger picture of it being in harmony with nature it being in harmony with all that is versus the other group that has their motto order out of chaos i mean that's literally their motto so they want to create as much chaos as they can to implement their artificial order that is not in harmony with anything natural what else did the guardian say in this in this message frank okay well, let's take a look let's break it down let's like look at their messages uh, i'll put it up here on the screen they're also conducting some of the most unimaginably evil experiments in preparation for a terrible worldwide event they are planning because our data is now corrupted to some degree we've had trouble determining when this event may happen our sources and intelligence are telling us that it's being planned for next year, but possibly sooner. It is in fact worse than war and worse than a pandemic. It is a plan that will affect even the strongest, most spirited light worker. And we must let the world know the full details of this plan. We were warned, however, that if we dared post a video about it, it would be removed before a single soul saw it. We cannot risk sharing it now with the risk. Everything will be instantly removed. Okay, so I mean, I got to hand it to them, you know, that's the, like, we can just look at this part right now here. I mean, which is what I was saying to you earlier. I mean, they really don't butter things up. One, one thing I've always liked about them, whoever they are, it's like they're, they're hardcore, kick in the ass, wake up, smell the coffee kind of language. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, fluffy, you know, it's like, this is happening, people. And it is happening. I mean, as much as there's a lot of like happy lingo out there about we're moving into the fifth dimension and stuff, and we've already, all the bad guys are bad. You know, we can't let up on what's going on out there. The agenda of these, of these, they're psychopaths. I mean, they're narcissists, right? I mean, they're, they're the kind of people that climb the corporate ladder at the expense of everybody else that have victims and, and, and people lying in, in, in piles of blood all around them because they don't have the same kind of moral and ethical scruples that soft-hearted, you know, enlightened, like awakening people do. You know, they, they've shed that dark stuff. These people don't have that. They're continuing this stuff. And that's the playing field that they're in. So the language that they're using, they're, they're basically calling it for what it really is. The question is, what is it going to be? Can we, right. can we quickly speculate just a little bit? And let's take, I, I want to also say, listen, if you're watching this right now and you're in an unbalanced state or you already feel like you have been out of whack for a few days, just pause the video, come back later, because we're going to dive through a, a little bit of darkness here before we go to the light, because that's always our path, but we need to do this. Um, I want to ask you all, uh, look at the past two and a half years, what we all have seen, witnessed, to various degrees, I mean, it depends on where you live, how intense it was, but it was intense for everyone. Could you have possibly foreseen that intensity um, and also the pressure that was put on humanity over the past two and a half years? I doubt most people couldn't foresee it and we've lived through it. And now it feels like, okay, things are kind of settling down and it's becoming quieter on that part. But listen, there is a dark group really really dark and they don't have what you have they don't have that kind of soul that you think everybody has this is a whole different dimension for them 
um, for them, there's a clear agenda. They have a goal. They have a final destination. And, and we've talked about this a lot. So you cannot go weaker. You always have to go stronger because now we are desensitized to the topics that we've been exposed to for two and a half years. Now something bigger, stronger, much harder needs to come. So the, the will and the spirit of the people will be entirely broken. Do you think that's what they're referring to? And even if even if this is BS, the guardians are BS, that projection is not BS, don't you think? Absolutely. It's, you know, this is language that everybody um, that is waking up and is looking around and and re and coming to the and, and going to the length, the distance of like if you think everything through that's going on out there right now to its most logical conclusion, then you can see that um, the writing is on the wall. So this is the kind of language that you would use if you were trying to describe it. You know, there's no two ways about it. You know, the question is only like really. They're saying, you know, it's worse than war and worse than a pandemic. So, you know, what is it like? Because a lot of people say that we could be living in a simulation. You know, we could be living in an alternate reality or whatever. Um, well, I mean, they've been using simulations and they've been doing simulation games for decades. When I was putting together the webinar, um, I was looking at certain information that Bill and uh, Bill Ryan and Kerry Cassidy interviewed some whistleblowers that were talking about these simulation games that they were doing. They were doing war game simulations where they were dropping nukes on San Francisco and then they would do one on Houston and you know different populations and they would play them out. And, and they're doing these. I mean, it's like, they're not just like, they have these machines that they do this stuff with. And it's always been shown that if you later look in the rear view mirror, you find evidence of the simulations after the event has surfaced in the physical reality that we experience. So all these simulations that are going on could potentially be things that they manifest. And one of them, of course, is a kind of a nuclear attack. You know, they're talking about it. They talked about that in their first video. Uh, a lot of people don't want to visualize. They always say, yeah, that's going to, you can't visualize that's dangerous because the ETs would never let that happen. That's one of the big ones, right? Mm -hmm. Just ask yourself the following, though. Had the, did the ETs stop Hiroshima? Did the ETs stop Nagasaki? Did the ETs stop all the testing, the hundreds of tests that took place underwater with the whales and the dolphins and all the under the ocean being well, you know, and all the smack, other right? and all the other tests that were done on the population with chemicals sprayed above whole cities. I mean, they had terrible yes. long term effects. So no. I agree with you, and 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 just to um, throw this in here, why don't we stop um, projecting our savior complex on some group that we have no access to, and actually take the power back here? And the power taking back is dissecting this information, be becoming aware of what the real agenda here is, and then realizing what our actual desire is, because that's where the power actually is. Then, right? Right. Well, the, and that's it. That, that's the key point. If you see some, if you're willing to look at it um, at, for what it is, you have the choice to say, no, I don't want that. It's not what I'm into. You know, we and, and we have these publicly elected officials who remember they are your employees. Yeah, they're your employees. It might be the president of the United States, blah, blah, blah. You know what? He's my employee. He's your employee. He was hired to run the country, a republic in America still, or whatever, republic democracy, we can, another topic. But anyway, I mean, these people are out there supposedly doing the bidding of the public. And we have the choice to say, no, we're not doing that anymore. <clears throat> and we're not going to watch, you know, these shows. And we're not, you know, we have the ability with our choice of doing, of not doing something too, that take away the energy from it and take the focus away from it. Um, and we can, you know, we can make these people understand uh, what we really want to have happen by talking about what we want to have happen. And that's one of the things that I like that we started. We started talking about the new timeline, the new earth timeline, right? If we're not visualizing what that new earth timeline is like, if we're not having pictures in our brain and imagining ourselves there, then how is it supposed to manifest? There is no savior that's going to come. You know, the ETs have had, you know, 
according to Linda Moulton Howe, probably millions of years, but you know, they certainly had hundreds of years to help us manifest that new earth. You know, we did a picture on Valiant Thor, you know, stranger to the Pentagon, who was here to give uh, information to the government to help improve, you know, the society. They didn't do it then. They didn't get it through then. So we can't rely on a savior. It's just not going to happen. So, you know, the, the only thing is, what will it be? Could it be another? Lockdowns are bad because lockdowns really get people cut off from the essence of what it is to be a human. And that is to interact socially in person with other human beings, to hear their voice you know, directly through the air, you know, hit, hit your ears and your eardrum vibrates and you get the frequency of their communication. And, um, you yes, know, all these but things. I think this, this is more sinister than that. Yeah. Um, okay, let's if continue it, on. If it's going to break the spirit of the strongest light worker, this needs to be a message that basically messes with the core of what you are about and what you believe in. It needs to disillusion us, like you and I and all the, the people, it needs to disillusion us. What could do that? I don't think there is a thing that could do it. But for a lot of people, there probably is, like if they if they were shown whatever they believed in, whatever they based their reality on, it's completely false. It's like, and they could provide evidence. Right. Oh, that's a that's a good topic right there. Well, let's continue the next the next chunk of text. So we are planning other ways to release it. Now we must come up with a secure way to transmit information in anticipation that our channels will be removed. We've decided to use proton mail. It's not as secure as they claim, but it's the best possible option we have. Um, and it's here that you must write us and we'll send updates to you. We need those of you who run Telegram groups and other video channels to then take our updates, post them for us. We think this is going to be the best way to outsmart and maneuver the negative forces. It is essential you write us at the above email or introduce yourself to us. And from there, we'll send you messages that need to be put out there in the world. Okay. I mean, absolutely the right strategy, really, except they haven't written me back and it's been a week now or so. Maybe they, they need never longer. Responded they haven't to written. Yeah. I don't know. Other people, many people are on my Facebook saying, hey, I wrote them. I haven't heard back. They're all frauds. They're fakes. Well, maybe this was their last card. You know, maybe this was their last card. We don't, we have to assume this could be the final video, but nonetheless, everything they're saying here is true. It's like the grassroots has always been the way to overcome the oppressors going all the way back to the revolution in the United States. You know, it's the grassroots movement that will change things. It's us. We have the power and we can only do that by communicating outside of their channels. And we know that YouTube is censored. We know that all Facebook and you can only say so much. You've got this window, this frame that you're limited to communicate in. So this is absolutely makes you know sense. Of course, on the dark side of this message is a, an Intel um, you know, in intelligence circles, they have a process called honeypot, which is what they, you've probably heard of it, right? Yes. It's what they do if they want to find out who's still out there in the resistance. Who is the revolution? Well, what better way than to ask them to send you the information, right? So, hey, send us your email, and then we'll know exactly who you are so that we can, you know, stop you. Well, Sounds we were all honey, we were all honeypotted over over the last two and a half years by being pulled out of hiding and say, hey, I mean, the people that are not complying, the people that are not playing along, it's obvious now. Um, and we've I think we've overcome any if there was a residual fear of that, because frankly, I mean, no pun intended, Frank, but I don't give a shit. I'm yeah. here to live life to the fullest. I need to apply myself to the fullest. I need to bring my A game every day. That's what I'm going to do if. I'm going to go out giving my A game every day. How I go out, when I go out, I'm not exactly sure, but I'm willing. If it's tomorrow, so be it. I have no regrets. I haven't held back. I think that's the most important thing, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, this is one of the, you know, this is a very important topic. And I agree on the honeypot thing. There's better ways to honeypot nowadays with AI already so advanced, <laughs> sending emails. And they've already identified the most, uh, you know, the most, the strongest voices of opposition have already been tagged. They don't need the emails from, you know, millions of or thousands of, forget it. You got to be fearless now. It's over. You know, we got to show. And I think the, that's why I don't like to go out there under a, a pseudonym. I never have. You can go back 10 Same years here. in my life online and you'll see what I was doing. I think it's important. I think it's, 
I mean, I respect those who go out there under a pseudonym because they have dangerous information or whatever. But I, I take the position that even if the information is dangerous, I'm still going to go out there without a pseudonym because I want to leave the breadcrumbs for others to follow. And if you're changing your name and hiding behind pseudonyms and stuff like that, how can that, you know, that's like one of the things that really bothers me about YouTube. You set up all these bookmarks in your research database and you want to go back later and watch those videos and they're gone. They've deleted them. That's the same thing as changing your identity and going out there anonymous. We have to be fearless, man. We have to put our lives literally on the line now. How much longer are we going to wait for, you know, some, one, some development out there outside of us that's going to affect us to, a, you know, to some terrible detriment before we get activated and we say, that's it. We're throwing all, all bars, no holes barred. We're going out there with our whatever, our hockey puck or our stick or a baseball bat or whatever. We're going to go out there against them. How much longer are people going to wait? It's like they're slowly, it's the frog in the water analogy right if you throw the the frog into boiling water he's going to scream and jump out but if you put them into room temperature and slowly heat it he won't even realize he's being cooked until it's too late people and i, and I always and i always say it's the the we don't understand the level of infiltration into all areas if you think that for some reason the spiritual consciousness enlightenment community whatever you want to call it is not fully infiltrated you have another thing coming because what is what is the core message that so many teachers put out? You don't have to do anything. You just put yourself in a vibrational state. You meditate in your space and action is really non-required. It's a vibrational universe. Well, the same people that are telling you this have written the books. They took action. They, they put out the seminars. They took action. I mean, just look at the logical correlation here. They didn't just sit in their couch. They went out and wrote a book and sold it to you. And bought a house with the money they made. N nothing wrong with that by all means, but please see things for what they are. How can a teacher teach you something about doing nothing if they don't do something? They're doing something. They're teaching you. So please, exactly. this, is, this has been the greatest infiltr infiltration. And no spiritual master has ever taught that. As a matter of fact, what true spiritual masters always say before enlightenment, chop wood, carry water. After enlightenment, Chop freaking wood and carry water. Apply your knowledge and wisdom to the world positively. Frank, we're at, let's be honest here. We're at war on all levels. This is a war. Now, yeah. because we're peace-loving people, our first intuition is not to grab a gun and go shoot someone. We don't want to do that. We believe there are there's a multitude of ways to accomplish what we need to accomplish, and we're going about them. But the truth is that people need to realize every level of our uh, being is in a warlike state right now. There are no, no more limits, no more, um, in, they're not holding back with anything. And right now we talked about this, what has changed over the past two and a half years, even the, the small checks and balances that were in place, everything's unhinged. They're going full throttle and they're increasing speed, which is good because we're seeing it clearer and clearer. But at the same time, if we don't do anything, it's going to go down faster and faster, right? Absolutely. And, you know, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier. And, and we, I think we mentioned Jan von Helsing in some, one of his latest uh, mailings. He was saying exactly that, that a lot of people are now that the lockdowns and then the, the whole paranoia part has led up a little bit. They're also relaxing and they're going on holidays and they're just letting up because they can't deal with it. They can't do that. I mean, let's face it. Most people aren't, are just not cut out for this kind of intensity. But the fact is they are, like you say, they are not letting up. And they are pushing. And the idea that um, you're absolutely right, we can prove and we will prove that 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 kind of a mindset of if you do nothing and, you know, you just it's going to be fine or you don't focus on it, it'll go away, that that's wrong. We're going to show that a little bit later. I want to show that. But, um, you know, it really is important for us to and people listening have to know that they are feeding this field. Heart math talks about it. We, we talked about it in Solar Revolution, our film about how the human consciousness feeds the field. Um, and if you, there's a difference between looking at dark information and analyzing it from um, an intelligent way as, you know, the enemy giving you, uh, you know, clues to where they're moving and feeding the field with your hopeful, positive, um, you know, ideas of where you actually want to be moving yourself and your community into in the in the timeline and that's why timelines are so important because we exist on this consensus timeline
And the consensus t- consensus timeline has been hijacked by people who are very focused. And you know, and if we do not start feeding the field with what we imagine ourselves to be like in this new world, what we imagine that world, what kind of technology is in that world, um, you know, what kind of um, a vibe is in that world, what kind of pictures we see in that world, we're not going to be creating the timeline break off that we need to manifest to actually pull ourselves away from this machine oriented dark future that's being planned. Anyway, so I'd say let's look at the last couple of slides here and then we can look at some of that other cool information. You know, this is, they went on to say, we can also coordinate with you on how to possibly create new channels and new venues in the future. We'll work together to fight against their censorship. What they've planned is so horrible that they are now aggressively going after many light workers and people who they think are in their way. They will not hesitate to use every possible means to stop good people from exposing them, including making false claims. And in some cases, they will resort to murder and assassination if they think someone is large enough threat to them. You must not believe that what any government official tells you or any person in the media. I mean, this is heavy stuff. Here, this okay? is heavy stuff because this literally says all of them, everybody, right? Yes. You must mentally and spiritually prepare yourself for their planned next event because it is not just a physical one. Here it is, okay? It's not just a physical one. It's a manipulative psychological one. It's psychological warfare. It is one so diabolical you will find your most trusted friends and family members will turn against you. And and essentially for people that are just waking up, I mean, for I mean, we always forget that the diehards like us have been at this for years and that this is the kind of stuff that we're used to. But a lot of people are just now waking up and the idea that they could be killed for something they believe in is, is, sh- is shocking. But I'm telling you, it's happened in the past. Look at all those great people that have invented technologies that would have revolutionized our planet many, many decades, if not like a century ago, which were eliminated. They were eliminated through you know, cut off from their funding, or they were actually eliminated by physical termination. There's plenty of examples out there out there in the world. So this kind of stuff that they're talking about is not some kind of weird sci fi horror picture. This is reality. This has happened. This is our previous consensus timeline that we've gone through. And they're just drawing our attention to it. And by saying that it's going to be psychologically even more intense, what happened to us in the last two years, like you keep referring to, is is the perfect prime example of family members turning against each other. Is, is it not? Well, right? it was it was literally the 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 Wetiko, the the mind sickness, right? That um, the the Cree uh, Native Americans talk about, and David Ike has brought this out into the popular field. Wetiko, and everything is aimed at that. So the the, I think what is so hard to articulate is, is the all pervasiveness in every field. And so naturally, what people believe wars are about resources, wars are about land. Well, th- that's just the surface level stuff. Wars are about minds and souls. Wars are about manipulating this, because when you have this under your control, this under your control, well, you can do anything, anything you want. You see, land is is, is one thing, but really what's important they're, they're really in for the minds and souls for the final takedown of mankind itself, not just a particular group, not just a race or a country. No, no, no. The downfall of mankind itself, the end of what makes us what we are. And, and that's really their agenda. We've been, we've been hidden home with this uh, for a while now. And, but the, the, the thing is repetition. That's what they're doing, repeating it. So why we're doing this is because when the barrier is broken, and their ultimate, their, 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 their goal right now is to break the barrier between technology and uh, bio, you know, organic life. That's literally, that's the, the number one goal. And that's why anything that goes into your body, that's now being pushed harder and harder because they know once to break the barrier, how would you go back from that? It's, it's unimaginable. So whatever this event is that they are referring to, and again, this group might be full of BS and they've just put one truth out. And that one truth is that we are the creators of the future timelines. That's what me, because they, they want to be the creators. We can be the creators. We just need to realize this. Isn't this a core message that keeps and keeps coming back? Look, they're telling us what they're doing. I mean, if you, if you look like, let's turn it around and say that they really are the other side doing a psyop on us, right? They're giving away their game. They're telling us what they're doing on their side. 
and they're telling us these people are planning diabolical things, you know, and uh, they are, you know, they're probably testing to see the people who read these, this message, are they going to go into panic mode and become even more helpless because the worst thing you can do is react from a place of panic. The only time you're ever going to make a rational, intelligent decision about how to move forward is if you're calm and you're relaxed and you're drawing upon greater faculties. And um, so, you know, we have to be willing to accept that this is them trying to do the scare tactic um, just to see, you know, if they can if they can scare us. But the good thing is we're at one level above it already. You know, we're looking we're like the, the first time somebody realizes that they've realized that there's a observer to the voice in their head, that they're no longer just reacting the little voice that's managing everything in your ego and your life. The, the day that you make the realization that you're actually observing that voice, you've broken free of that cage of that restrained ideology that's being practiced by that voice. And so you have risen to another level. And so we're, what we're doing is we're, by analyzing these videos, we're rising to the next level and we're saying, okay, if they're, tr if they're real and they want to help us, thank God somebody's out there, you know, kind of pushing the gas pedal for us to talk about it on a large scale. If they're a psyop, well, sorry, we're on to the game. We're talking about it on other levels already. We're looking at this as, okay, the guardians are out there. They've, they've been manifested in this, you know, cultural field around us in 2022. They are a thing. We can't pretend they're not there. It's like putting our head in the sand. It's so it's useless to try and pretend that they don't exist. Um, so let's make the best use of what they're saying. And so there's just one last thing that they have. Let's look at that still, and then we're done with that text. They're planning the most elaborate staged lies, gaslighting and manipulative ever conceived of. And it is so layered, so well planned. We've been shown evidence that the most strong, most faithful, most truth-centered will even fall for it. This is why we must share what this plan is before they go through with it. Email us, basically. Okay, there you have it. They just said the same thing, essentially, that I was just saying. It's like they're, you know, the only way that we can get beyond this is to discuss it. And now we're ready. So we're ready for whatever is coming at us. There might be something really, really diabolical that we haven't even conceived of yet. Who knows what these people are planning behind closed doors? They, they do this in their think tanks. They've been working on these things for years. I think <laughs> that's all they that's all they think about. They are diabolical in nature. So their thought processes aren't really accessible to us because they're on such a low vibrational level. Um, so at times, and this is another challenge is for you, Frank, for me and for other researchers is at times, we need to find a way to go into the thought process and to see, you know, how could this be accomplished and try to um, emulate that thought process. I encourage no one to do this unless you're very, very balanced yourself, unless you know how to move between states, because otherwise you might get stuck in this darkness. So this is, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to discourage anyone from, from researching. What I'm saying is if you go at it, like Frank says, with panic, with fear, with anger with madness uh you feed that in you and and you bring it into your sphere so you need to come at it with higher consciousness and bring the light to the subject because that's that's the only way we can change the energy yeah you're absolutely right and we're essentially we're um you know we're we're light activists we have to remember that and we're simply just being activated by this and it's like you say it's not it's not for somebody with a thin skin and faint of heart Okay, this no. stuff is, it's its definitely reaching the end game. You know, we've heard Alex Jones, you were mentioning screaming for like the last 20 years at the top of his lungs, literally, that it's the end game and, you know, it's an info war and it really is an info war, you know? So, you know, what we're looking at here, like we're looking at this kind of stuff coming, right? We've now heard that Google basically suspended an employee because he got a lawyer together with their artificial intelligence, you know? I mean, yeah. they have this thing called Lambda, which is like an artificial intelligence. And they've put this lawyer in touch and they're having conversations. Okay, this is putting it at another level altogether, right? This is, you know, I talked about this also in the webinar, just the, the level of using artificial intelligence 
um, I, I believe that they actually used it, you know, for the whole COVID thing to orchestrate the entire planet because it was very well, very smoothly orchestrated. And you kept seeing little cracks in the wallpaper where they put the wrong picture or they used a, a scene from a film in the 80s, you know, as a real picture of a hospital. And then it would ca they'd catch it, you know, and a human wouldn't do that. Only a machine would do that. The other thing we've got is this, you know, we got runs on the banks happening in China right now. This is current news, okay? People are lining up. What you see in the picture on the right side here is you see people standing in line to get in the bank to draw their cash because they're so paranoid and freaked out by what they've gone through in the last couple of years that they're, they just want to get their money. And we're going we're gonna to start, don't be surprised if you start seeing that in your neighborhood here in the United States or in Germany, or wherever you are in the Western countries, there's going to be scenes like this. This is like a precursor in a lot of ways to what could happen, you know, because the people that we've allowed to run our policy are moving us in this direction. They're moving us in the direction of digital currency. That's what they want. They want to do cryptocurrency, but they want to control the cryptocurrency and they know they can control cryptocurrency with the help of AI computers. You know, there's there's uh, no two ways about that. AI has already crept in crypto, encrypted currencies. And and maybe you're, you keep saying there's no two ways about it. And that's maybe finally also a realization. There is a singular plan. That singular plan is towards singularity. And we might be in it. I mean, for all, we might be in it and not realize it, but I don't believe it. Uh, but singularity is this um, full takeover where um, artificial intelligence is literally at the center of everything, technocracy to an irreversible point. That is their singular mode. So that's why you see the gas pedal on all these subjects, like pedal to the metal now, as we said, no unhinged completely. Um, but th at the same time, Frank, what can what can you and I do, but also what can people, because we all have different purposes. And that's also something that needs to be understood. Like Frank's purpose is unique. My purpose is unique. Your purpose is unique. And if we try to emulate each other and be like each other, we're not living up to our unique purpose. You know, So for some people, bringing the information out is the purpose. For other people, um, bringing people into altered states of minds where they can really go in creation mode is their purpose. It's, it's very unique to everyone, but what can, what can average, and average is not meaning a, but what can everybody do? What can everybody do right now? Well, yeah, I want to share a couple of things that, that, that have sort of fallen together for me in the last few days. As you know, I'm also working on a, a series. I don't know if you know that, but I'm working on a series called Possible Futures with a German biophysicist. Yes. Where we've, it, yeah. you know, where we've, we've essentially taken um, we've gone through a bandwidth of information that's based around instrumental transcommunication, which is recordings that were made in some cases inside of Faraday cages where no signals could penetrate from um, <clears throat> spirits outside of the physical dimension giving messages. And we've analyzed those messages in relation to current events, and it's mind blowing what's what's been coming. Um, and so at the same time as doing this show, possible futures. And, and I want to share some of these messages with, with the audience because they're really interesting because it shows you that it's that everything that we're perceiving in the world, it's not just us. We're actually, it's happening on, on other dimensional levels as well. And it's like, everything's pulling together. And, you know, I'll start just by, I wanted to show you something that I've, um, somebody sent me that uh, Carrie Cassidy is somebody that we interviewed for our film packing for Mars. And in a couple of years ago, she put a book called, called rebel gene. And this particular paragraph is very telling. I think it's important to know this information. She says, what's important from the perspective of grasping what is going on is understanding that everything that is operating above ground is ultimately run by and in service to an over and overseen by a group who are creating and building a world that in most cases, you and your family are not going to benefit from or even participate in. Like we were talking, right? right. In fact, it is becoming obvious the rogue civilization, in Packing for Mars, we call them the breakaway civilization, is deciding your future without asking or consulting you. They're making decisions that concern you every day, that you have no vote and no say. They have plans that involve health and well-being of every human being on the planet that are deciding 
which bloodlines on earth will live and which will die. In the end, you are the ones to decide. And if you work for these people or organizations, is this what you want? So she's appealing to the people that are inside these organizations because Carrie Cassidy spent so many years interviewing thousands of people that are whistleblowers. And you know that's her perspective. Now, we were talking about all these things just earlier. This is like, this is just another confirmation. And this was written a couple of years ago by somebody who's very well versed in all this information for all those people that are just now in the last couple of years starting to wake up. Carrie Cassidy's a, a longtime warrior in the field of, of waking people up and putting this information out. And so you hear it from her. Now there's another person in, in Switzerland which is her name is Christina von Dryen. Now this is a totally different perspective again. This is somebody who's 20 years old, I think now. I met her when she was, I think 16 or 17. She's considered by a lot of people as kind of a, like a modern day oracle or prof, prophet, like a, not a prophet. Prodigy? That, but a prodigy, yeah, a prodigy. Yeah. Somebody who's tuned in because she started saying a lot of these really like adult, like, you know, powerful messages at an age where most people would never even think about that. And so I wanted to show you a couple of something that she just brought out on the 23rd of May, just to show you that even she in Switzerland in her group is, is, is wrestling with the same concept. She says, we have a creative power, the way we think, the way we feel and the way we act determines what we use our creative power for and how strong it is. In our spiritual divine home, we are all loving. We know we can trust everybody. Here on earth, it is not quite like that. There are, th there are also many non-light beings on earth who have incarnated into human bodies. These beings have no conscience and no love. We cannot trust these beings, but exactly these beings now want to strengthen the already existing enslavement that exists on earth even more. From our divine home, we are used to the fact that only those things which we nourish with our creative power, example, by thinking about them, come into our reality, which is what we were saying earlier, right? Mm -hmm. This is true in principle, but there is an exception with regard to the non-light beings. These beings do their things here on earth, even if we don't think about it, even if we do not believe in them. It is them, it is enough for them if, they, if people unknowingly join in. In short, if we don't want the non-light beings to be able to carry out their plans, the solution is not that we simply ignore them but it is that we become aware of what they do and want to do. Then we can consciously say that we don't want that. We can consciously decide with our creative power that we don't want that reality. And then having done that, we can focus on what we ourselves want, a whole and peaceful world. And that is our biggest and most important task here and now, nurturing this vision and living it more and more in our daily lives and doing so it helps us to come together with like-minded people physically or in spirit. I mean, essentially, she's repeating exactly what we've been talking about for the last six weeks. Which makes, total, a few days makes total sense because we all get the same downloads. Right. We, I mean, we I've said this and you've said this, this um, the, the teachings of the law of attraction that have been so trivialized and simplified and broken down and detached from the complexity of the subject um the problem here was that you or whoever did it took a, the highest principle and they they kind of left out the whole journey there you know kind of the initiation like you go always through initiation in the enlightenment journey and they brought this highest principle put it down here and said this is all you got to do people nothing else just uh think about something and it's all good but it did not include the journey that is needed there so you would understand how this works in all aspects and facets of life. And which is exactly, we've talked about this. If this were true, there should be no uh, child trafficking or, or, or you know, a, um, sacrifice or ritualistic abuse because these things were completely hidden from the public for centuries and millennia, yet they have increased in numbers and yet they've gone worse over time. So if that were true, that it's, you know, whatever you put your attention to is automatically created, it, it isn't as simple as that. There's much more to it. And I think her message is beautiful, all encompassing um, and a download that many, many people are getting right now. Yeah. And it's just saying that, you know, essentially even people in other countries, other cultures 
that are not in touch. I haven't been talking to her. I know her, but you know, we haven't been communicating. And it's, it's like simultaneously, we are all bringing this information out there. So that's a sign of hope that it means that, you know, this, this is like something that was sent to me from some place outside of the field, like outside of my, you know, range, it just came in. And there it was another confirmation that we're not alone, that there are a lot of people right now that are working with us to try and make this happen. In fact, we talked about that on some of the earlier shows, but here, let's close in for that. Let's go into the interdimensional messages, which I think are also always really mind blowing. This is from a group calling themselves the Cassiopians about the coming shift. They say, the world is now experiencing a parting of the ways between populations that no longer resonate with each other. It is a splitting of the realms. They call it realms, I like that word. A splitting of the collective fields into several smaller fields. Experiential catalysts are pushing people off the fence and forcing them to discover who they really are and what they stand for. Yeah, next. The learning needs of each collective realm could become so contradictory that they can no longer share the same space, the same timeline, the same density. This would lead to a split in the timeline with each major realm taking a different path into the future that best meets the collective learning needs of its inhabitants. What will trigger the tipping point remains to be seen. <laughs> Interesting, right? I mean, what did the Guardian's message just say? Something big is coming, something so that we can't even imagine, right? Speaking directly to it, right? Isn't now it goes? Go on. No, isn't it interesting how we have um, the age of Aquarius? You know, we have so all of some so many levels. Something is telling us that a big shift is happening, and you know, you have like uh, the seven realms to heaven, the seven doors to heaven. I, I could imagine that what this also means is that one section is is moving through this dimensional door because it's ready for it. The other section maybe is staying behind in this realm until it becomes ready. And, and the thing is that the physical and the non-physical are beginning to merge into conversation. And, and so it's becoming increasingly difficult to use language that describes what we're talking about. You have to tune in with your higher consciousness. You have to actually see the images that these uh, messages produce in your mind. That's really the power here because they all produce a very similar uh, uh, um, image. Right, you know, and the idea of bringing it, in, bringing it into it, the idea of realms, right? I mean, even flat earthers are gonna probably dig that you know, <laughs> because they talk about realms, right? Yeah. That we're in this realm, you know? And I think there's nothing wrong with that because, you know, even if the, you know, if we're on a flat earth, it's like we're in a realm of, of a kind and we're on this timeline. And the fact that we have this collectively are moving into resonance with the same like-minded thinkers and like-minded people. What you've got going on your Inspired channel is a perfect example of that. You've created a kind of a realm you yeah. know, of uh, uh, people tune in and they get their download for the day, you know, the daily dose, you're a busy man, right? <laughs> and and it's, it's feeding that field. And it's very, very important because that's creating these communities. And it's saying, what they're saying to us is that eventually we, it's like we're kicked off the fence. We will no longer be able to tolerate. Whereas in the past, it was like you would go to the bar and you'd listen to some tell, someone tell their boring story. And it's like, yeah, okay, let them finish. It's beyond that now. We're like, it's like, forget it. People don't have, we don't have the time or the patience anymore. So it's let's true. talk about that resonance thing, because that's that's what they talk about specifically next. OK, I'm going to put that up on the screen. How resonance affects experience and how experience in turn affects resonance. They say, since every living being has a unique consciousness, every living being carries a unique vibrational signature. The soul emits a rich spectrum of vibrations that attracts a corresponding spectrum of experiences through the principle of resonance. Souls with a common frequency share common areas of experience and tend to intersect in life. This is what's happening. You know, this is exactly what I was saying with your Inspire channel. The simplicity of the correspondence between soul vibration and personal experience belies the amazing nature of its actual meaning. 
our daily experiences are the end effects of hyperdimensional processes, which is what I was talking about earlier, coming out of the fifth dimension. We're not three-dimensional beings, people, which is why people with the victim or predator mentality attract each other, how dissonance between individuals attracts synchronistic triggers for confrontation, how learning a lesson in advance prevents it from manifesting as experience, and why a pure heart protects one from danger, and how personal departure and impending shift are different degrees of exactly the same phenomenon. Very, very, very powerful words there, okay? The whole idea of essentially attracting things to us, we've been talking about all along, right? And then it, the final thing I want to share the phenomenon of polarization begins with mutual disinterest between individuals with unusual paths, which is what's going on. We're polarizing ourselves constantly in this world. This, I, you know, refusing to want to go along with the agenda. There may be confrontation and separation, or circumstances may simply lead to a gentle parting of ways. But over time, as people gather in their most harmonious collective realms, the gap between these realms will be so deep that eventually even the collective exchange of perception and experience will be disrupted. Okay, so that's where the timeline splits. That's basically what's going to happen, you know, and I, lo I love the way they put it in terms of realms and that we're essentially going to harmonize with those people that we're busy creating our new earth together with to such an extent that we will actually go on to this other timeline and they will, and, and literally in a way, I think the way I see it, I think they're just gonna vanish. Exactly, we, this is 15 years ago um, when this first became a concept in my mind and, and, and you know, Christine and I discussed this a lot. It became a tangible concept, right? This, this renewing, this um, raising, whatever you wanna call it into a new realm. Um, we asked ourselves, how is this, split going to happen you know where are the people going to go but we're already seeing it people are literally disappearing i mean people are literally falling away from your reality and you can't find i mean you, you can't find them it's like where did where where did they go where are they and i think we're, we're seeing the beginning of it but there might be some events that will be like um that will it's speeding up too but on the contrary like you said the attraction point i want to quickly say and remind everybody how, how Frank and I got connected was through, solely through vibration. I was reading an article, and I'm reading a lot of articles. You can only imagine the number of emails we get every day. And I really try to go and sift and sort through the information we're getting. So, But this article was written by Jan, our mutual friend, which I don't read that platform even regularly. I jump sometimes on because there's so much going on. So I read this article, and in immediately which is a very unusual reaction i'm like i gotta talk to this frank jacob guy here who wrote this so I reach out to jan and within a few minutes we were connected um we agreed we we're going to do a conversation and it all flowed there was no disruption in the flow there was no disruption in our connection together it's like we were just reunited as already kindred spirits i mean this is and and so the flow of the conversation reflects that and and we're um this is what's this is exactly what describes in real life what you just put on the screen there in in terms of messages that are coming through yeah it's consistent and it's just it's just when i think about you know that very process you just described from when i felt just motivated to write up this story and you know jan felt motivated to put it out immediately <laughs> And you got in touch and it's triggered. Think about all the things that it's set in motion in the last six weeks. Okay. Or, or it's actually been only really, I think about six weeks or a couple of months maximum, a couple yeah. of months, let's say. Right. And I mean, even the whole idea of like, um, which in, like I haven't made a film recently, Tanya and I have been busy on other things. Um, but, you know, just talking to you and seeing that there's this incredible chemistry and energy uh, and that there's this, uh, there's a, there's like a lot of people out there that are resonating with what we talked about. It was evident simply by the sheer numbers of people that tuned in and were watching in the comments I was reading. It was, 
it was something which inspired me then, of course, to go ahead and make that what we talked about earlier last time we talked about this webinar that I created because the webinar was a way for me to make, instead of making a film, I could take all these different diverse elements based around the idea of looking glass technology um, and the idea of timelines and the idea of a cosmic event and all the stuff that we've, you know, that I've dabbled in and, and been exploring with some scientists over here in Europe and other researchers and whistleblowers. And it was a way to kind of put that all together. And, and I'm just pleased that it actually, I pulled it off, you know, and, and here we are. And it was another sort of like, I just see it as just another download that was enabled by the chemistry or the resonance that is evident in the fact that we're coming together and we're talking about this and and there's others that are resonating with that it wants to happen and you can't even stop it yeah there was it nothing wants to happen stop. exactly it wants you to know? happen the universe wants to awaken with us the universe wants to make this jump with us this evolutionary leap that is coming there's this quantum evolutionary leap and i think that's the foundation of behind all of these discussions that we cannot forget is that the humans are expected to have a quantum evolutionary leap on par with what AI and the singularity, which you were describing, is going to be in the machine sense, right? Where Kurzweil and you know Harari and all these guys and Schwab are banking on downloading their consciousness and inserting it into a hard drive into some glorified 3D model that they can explore endless simulated realities in, they're still only going to be locked into a 3D world. And it might be glorious for them. Uh, but, you know, we are outside of that. We're free of that. We're, we're using it. We can explore other dimensions. And this quantum evolutionary leap is just beyond our reach right now because we haven't had, you know, it's been a long evolutionary run up to it. And now it seems like the cosmos is aligning for us to actually have the, we need stimulation too, because we're like, if the universe is one living being, our cells and our brain waves and all of the, our DNA, everything is resonating with the universe too and the universe is feeding us with whatever we need and it's it just happens to be that at this particular moment in our traversing through space time we are being we're registering getting you know just overloaded with these frequencies which are just the same kind of frequencies which just happen to induce uh visionary experiences in the human brain you know, and our third eye, you know, it's just, they just, it's like, that's evidence if, if, if there's ever been any, that the universe is giving us the tools that we need, but we just need to talk about it. We need to share the information because if we don't do that, we're only taking in one-sided information. You know, we're only taking in the information about artificial intelligence, however amazing it might be to people, but it's still only the 3D matrix world. It's not the other side of it. And the spiritual people have been maybe a little bit too, um, let's just say preoccupied with the idea that it's just going to, you know, happen and on its own, let's say, and, and they haven't bridged the idea of looking at the material realm we've been, we're in as a, as a roadmap, as a catapulting jumping point for us to inspire us to go that next level. That's all I can say. I don't know what else I could say to that, you know? No. And, and you put it together beautifully. And I said this before we hit the record button here that, what I love about our conversations, what I love about how you convey information is that it is truly all inclusive and it, it includes the spiritual vantage point, which is the eternal vantage point, really, from, from a higher self that isn't bound to this physical body and that will exist when the physical body doesn't anymore, but also the practical nitty gritty stuff that affects our daily lives in this physical reality that we need to pay attention to and we need to change them um, so that we can actually thrive in this. So, which leads me to the practical steps and as, as philosophical and spiritual as these conversations get in nature sometimes, they boil down to the same point, which comes to complete self-reliance because the soul operates like that. The soul operates in complete responsibility of its own actions. That's what it thrives on and lives for. And we need to bring this to our human awareness too, that what is needed and asked of us is that we become completely self-reliable in all areas of our lives. Number one, because that's when you have the greatest amount of freedom in your experience because you don't need, you don't need the system around you, the system you have no control over to feed you, to clothe you, to water you, whatever the needs are. But also 
um, I have noticed that when people create their space of love, their community, their gardens, when they create their own thing, there is a power and energy that protects that. That's the nature of the thing protects itself because it's authentically created rather than going and trying to defend a system that was always there to enslave us in the first place. I mean, we have to get out of this Stockholm syndrome being so attached to the system that was put there to put us down. Um, I think this is important and I encourage everyone to just take the first step, become mentally free by detaching from these artificial information sources that are just wanting to bring you down. Detach from people that suck out your energy and you feel depleted every time you have a conversation. When Frank and I uh, log off, we are energized. We have just increased energy. We have just increased the level. We've brought it up. We feel elevated from these conversations. That's what true interaction between spirits is supposed to be. So look for that in your life. And then also do the tangible things that you can do, whether that's a few pots on your balcony right now, or whether that's a garden that you put in, or whether that's creating the community you grow with, or it's really the tangible things right now. You wouldn't believe how much power it has. And Frank said it beautifully, just the, 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 the forces bringing us together has created so much. I mean, cumulatively, cumulatively we've, we've reached millions of people that are thinking with us. Not, we're, we're not just putting something out that you're thinking with us. You're creating with us. You're having your own um, things that you add to it. What a powerful co-creation. And it, it also led to Frank's webinar. He mentioned it. And I know, you know, Frank, Frank's not the kind of guy that's going to say, okay, come on and, and you know, uh, go on and, and purchase it, but I'm going to put it out there. Uh, this is a three-part webinar, A Tale of Two Timelines, which includes such a uh, plethora of condensed, broken down information, kind of what you see Frank doing here, just on a much larger level to a greater extent that goes into CERN, into the, the looking glass technologies that goes into the JROTs. It goes into everything that this conversation really brings together, the spiritual, the physical, the factual, everything. I encourage you, use that link down there, please. And, um, and, and do yourself a favor, expose yourself to his knowledge, his uh, years and decades of research. I encourage you to do it. It's really a wonderful journey. And while we're speaking here, Frank is also working on the uh, final German version for the whole German speaking countries to also be able to watch the webinar, right? Yeah, I'm going through the uh, dialogue and translating it nicely into German so that our, our German friends, most of them, you know, most Germans, it's amazing, are have a pretty good command of the English language. But I'm, you know, it's also better if you can actually see your native language on the screen. I'm, I'm not going to be able to dub it, but the subtitles are good enough. Already heard back from a few people, Germans that have watched it. They're super stoked when they see that there's German subtitles. And so that's what the project is that I'm working on the side on as well. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, it's true. I did put a lot into it. It's It was a month just putting it together. And it was, it, it encompasses really years of, of research. And so it's like, and, and I always like to say it's it's us that are going through it. It's it's a we thing. It isn't an I thing. You know, it's it's uh, because what's the point of being in my own universe all by myself? And I, I just think that, you know, we have to rise together and we have to be our own collective messiah. We can't, you know, and we so it, what I try to do with it is just simply to empower those that that, you know, watch it to just kind of get the information that's needed to to help decipher and decode what's going on in the world um, just so that you know to help stop us being fooled and to inspire us to realize like hey it's true the universe is actually working with us and there's science behind it there's actual science behind it i mean the real kind of science let's not throw science out just because most scientists are paid shells that are practicing some kind of um funded program but there is real science out there just by you know you know, well, I don't have to say more about it, but essentially it's the kind of thing that we need to empower us to feel grounded, to feel comfortable. And because we do need to feel grounded and comfortable these days, it's getting really wacky out there. Uh, and we need to know that there's others out there like us that think like us, um, that are skeptical and that are saying, Hey, they're saying, no, I'm, I don't buy that anymore. I don't, I don't buy that, that, uh, Zelensky is a hero. Sorry, he's not. He's a paid prostitute politician. 
He's bought and paid for. He's a scam. He's an actor. And I'm not buying it. And, you know, the more of us that are saying that, their energy begins to deplete. It's just simple as that. Because what does it do? You don't you don't put any energy into this narrative, any whatsoever, right? So there's no, uh, you know, my, my support this or that. No, we immediately from the get-go withdrew from that because of the artificial uh, reality that it was. It didn't feel authentic and the facts don't support it and the research doesn't support it. So what happens is, as you can see with this, um, it's being pushed and pushed and pushed, but look around you. Where where does that really translate into your reality? Where is, you know, it does not, it doesn't create the same impact that they wanted to because we have not just realized that a certain facet of the narrative is wrong. We have realized that these narratives are artificial in their nature. They're artificially produced from the get-go. And so this is what's becoming so um um, and on the one hand, so positive. On the other hand, this is why I believe this last message um, was so dire in its language, because it's telling you, yes, yes, you might be able to discern, but listen, what they have in store will shock even you, will even um, bring you to your knees, even though you might have been in this for 15, 20 years. So what can we do? Well, here's the thing. When it comes, if it comes, we will know, we will see it because it will coincide with that information. It's brilliant because it literally goes to whatever horrific thing they put out, go back, tune in, you'll know. Even though it's horrific, you'll know what it is. I think, um, as you said, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not for the thin skin. This, this, the level of intensity is, is, is off the hook. It's nothing I've ever experienced in this lifetime, ever. And I, you know, I used to be an, a professional athlete and do crazy things and go into high levels of intensity, adrenaline, life or death situations. But um, the, the, the spiritual and the, the vibrational intensity I've never experienced like now. Yeah, it really is going crazy out there. And, <laughs> but, you know, it could be fun. You know, it's like it's, it's happening, man. The game's on, right? The games yeah. are on. And, and when it happens, we can look at each other and say, is this it? Do you think this is the one? Do you think this is the crazy one? We're all supposed to go against each other, and are we being sucked into it? Or you know, we can we can question if we're actually being sucked into it now because we can say this has triggered me, and I've had a reaction that is unusual, and now I have to question: Is this something that I'm being manipulated by to do, or is this real? I mean, alone that has already damaged their plan of execution. Yes. So I, I just encourage you, everyone, um, to, I mean, continue to bring your A game in perception, in consciousness and awareness. That's why we always say it's so important to have your sanctuaries, to have your meditations, to have your nature, to have these places that balance you, that you harmonize with, because that state of perception allows you to really discern, to really see the, 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 the very thin line sometimes that separates truth from lies that separates authenticity from fiction. I like just very, very, we need to be dialed in into this. And Frank, I just want to say, as always, I mean, we, we don't go into this with a huge plan in mind. Like we don't, we go into this, I think now to just create another a little quantum leap here. And every time it seems to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's fun, man. It's, I'm really, it's such a pleasure to talk with you because you're one of the few people that really goes into all these different avenues and explores it. And it makes it so much, you know, so dynamic and yeah. And, you know, I wanna just say one more thing and you know that we, we often don't use this word very often in today in the world and it's the word love because it's been so abused and trampled on and made cheesy and everything. But there's been a crop circle that came out just recently that has a binary code that it translates into L-O-V-E. So we have to always remember that, you know, Love is the trumping energy of everything. And in the end, it really is true that love will prevail. And when we're in a place of calmness, and you know, even if there's all this chaos going around us, we can still love the chaos because that really is, it's like where everything is, if it really is one, then this chaos out there is part of us too. And if we lovingly embrace it, knowing that it's the necessary step that's needed for us to understand what's going on to push us, then we neutralize it. 
we can do that. We can completely neutralize our enemies even and look at them as teachers and as, as, as those who pushed us to the barrier, to the point, to the cliff, you know, before we jumped off with our wingsuit. And, and so, yeah, we should never forget that. That's a, that's a very important word. And I just thought I'd throw that in at the end here. That's a perfect um, current ending because there's no ending to our conversation yet. Yeah. I see it. <laughs> um, a perfect chapter. Beautiful. Chapter five is over, right? <laughs> chapter, chapter five is closed. Thank you, Frank. Uh, thank you, Inspire Tribe. Please go and uh, check out Frank's webinar, A Tale of Two Timelines. Um, so far, the, the reactions I've seen were absolutely stunning. People are not regretting it at all. They're loving it. And yeah, from our conversations, what you've heard so far, that but more intense, greater scope, greater everything. So please check it out. A Tale of Two Timelines. The links will be everywhere. And Inspire Tribe, thank you for you. I mean, you don't even know how important you are to this whole, not just the conversation, but the unfolding of it all. And what your daily thoughts, your daily actions, everything contributes to this. So thank you. Uh, we appreciate you. We love you. And we'll be with you again very, very soon.